uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark, there's only can, one Mark Newton. Can, can you can you see it now, Mark? That's because Mark, he's got yeah. one. Be, be, because, Mark. Yeah, because he wasn't a panelist uh, okay. until now. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I think you had to make me the panelist, and that's why I didn't okay, show up. Cool. Answer, but that's fine. No worries. You, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm very low tech, Mark. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? <laughs> Happy New Year. Good to see yeah. you. Yeah, nice to hear from you, buddy. And, you know, uh, like I said on Twitter, I want to acknowledge, you know, when some people were nervous about the markets being elevated last time yeah. we talked, uh, all your work was saying higher. I think back then you were looking for recovering yields and yeah. favored the banking sector because uh, we'd have some steepening in the curve and yeah. that worked out. And so uh, I'm pretty curious. Uh, you said you didn't see any trouble really for markets until the spring. And here we are a couple months away from the spring equinox. So go ahead, take it away, buddy. The market's been incredibly resilient, as we as we all know, with regards to equities. Um, yeah, you know, price action has not really shown us any indication of any any weakness whatsoever. I, I when I came into uh, the year, there was a couple cycles that indicated a potential for turning in uh, January. Uh, those really have passed as of now. I, I think that we're in really the final week where that can work and. If we get past that, then potentially we could extend out until right around the 17th of February into the 24th, and that would be also important. But, you know, I, my my concerns at this point have to do with uh, momentum just being overbought on really yeah, yeah. a daily and a weekly and really a monthly basis um, and really showing a lot of signs of flattening out. I think that's important. So initially you look at things like the S&P, you see that we've rallied you know, a good 15% just since October, but yet things like RSI cannot even hit the levels that we saw back in the latter part of December. And so historically, when you start to see indices press higher, but momentum can't really reach those former peaks, oftentimes that can be problematic, like we saw last September. And if you look at the, the left-hand side of the screen, you see that we pressed higher, RSI is lower. You also saw that in July, and now we're really seeing it again. So that's a little bit of a concern. And on a, uh, a weekly basis, we're obviously seeing RSI levels now at 79, the highest level in, in almost two years. And we're up through the higher part of the Bollinger. Uh, monthly basis is really what causes me a little bit of concern and that, you know, RSI is at a 71, but we're nowhere near the peaks that we saw back in January, 2018. And so, you know, there's been a definite flattening out of momentum. A lot of times that does happen when you see a little bit of a divergence. Um, and of course, we would need to stall out and turn down for that to be problematic. For now, it's... Would it's it have to be something like Apple, Mark? I mean, you know, Apple has a larger market cap than the Australian, uh, all of the Australian market. And then I told that to Steve, and he said it even has a larger market cap than the total amount of market cap in DAX. Yeah, pretty incredible. I mean, Apple was a stock I highlighted uh, last week and suggested that really the stock is at a level where it should be sold. And uh, okay. I, I firmly believe that. Uh, technically, uh, I no longer own the stock. It's been a nice run. It's just gotten a little oh, bit too parab parabolic for my taste. And, you know, we're seeing it on, uh, you know, multiple time frames now where you look at the stock and, uh, you know, on, on a weekly basis, you can see the RSI is up at an 89. It's really the highest it's been in, in a long, long time. And so it's, it's going to be very, very difficult for the stock to really replicate, uh, you know, its performance from last year as we head into 2020. Uh, it's only been a handful of occasions where we've seen momentum this high, even on a monthly basis over the last 20 years. And so each of those times, typically you see the stock start to flatten out. And so Given that we have five stocks now in the S and P, you know that are that are you know approaching the trillion dollar club that now represent about close to eighteen percent of the index. I mean, I, I view that as is problematic. Yeah. But initially, yeah. I had a list of five concerns. I said, you know what, momentum is overbought now. It's diverging negatively. Sentiment uh -huh. has now gotten frothy. Um, Demarc signals are showing exhaustion, at least on a daily time frame. Um, the weekly is still a couple of weeks away. Cycles tend to turn down at this point in January. If you look, if you overlay the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years 
Uh, on top of this, uh, historically, the market tends to turn in the middle part of January. So I want okay. to look out from that. And financial underperformance is something that we've started to see a little bit more uh, dramatically of late. And I think that's also yeah, a problem. Oh, yeah, have. the banks got hit a, a lot of it on earnings. But could it also be, Mark, that, um, you know, I look at the 10-year yield chart and uh, – it looks like we're on the verge of a breakdown, like under 173 or 170 is going to be kind of a negative signal that could uh, lead to a retest of the 143 level. And I've actually noticed the last week or so that um, the bond, the 30 year, that the steepening that was occurring is starting to dissipate again. Yes. Yeah, I think that's important. I think that the, the whole structure of this move since August has been rather, you know, choppy and corrective. Sure. It's not really all that convincing. The yields have made a, a really meaningful low, in my view. So, uh, you know, today's move is interesting. Yields have pulled back pretty, pretty sharply from December. And, yeah. uh, you know, stocks obviously have not really followed suit. We, we've been going higher as yields have been moving lower. So, you know, it's been interesting in the last month that stocks and bonds have rallied in, in unison and that, that can happen, of course. But, uh, you know, my view is that, uh, you know, the move in the financials is interesting. You know, the equal weighted financials index has actually been going down since the middle part of, uh, of, of 2018. And so the XLF being up near all time highs, it's really just been you know, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, uh, Citigroup, a lot of those have been, uh, you know, showing that kind of strength. But but the, the majority of the, you know, the index actually is moving exactly the opposite. We've actually been, uh, we've seen a pretty pronounced breakdown in, you know, when you look at equal weighted financials versus the S&P or just the financial yeah. indices. So a lot of it's just been a lot of the large cap uh, financial group. But the XLF, the, the one thing that makes me a little bit wary about being too bearish just yet is when you look at things like, you know, financials on a monthly basis now breaking out above all-time highs. You see a pretty historic breakout also in the industrials sector. So this is just a monthly chart of XLF, and it's, uh, yeah. you know, it's fascinating that we're in the process of, uh, you know, exceeding these former highs that were made back in, in 2007, yeah. first time in 13 years. Uh, XLI and health sure took a long time compared to other sectors. Yeah, I mean, XL, XLI is now breaking out. It's gotten extended, but on a short-term basis, that's still pretty constructive when you see, uh, you know, move, the move in, in yeah. XLI, for example. Uh, you know, so I'm, I'm sort of grappling with what, what, what could happen that could lead this down if, if industrials for the first time are breaking out above 2018 highs out of this nice base financials are also doing the same healthcare recently has done the same uh, it's going to fall on technology to really you know if, if tech starts to fall these are other sectors that, that look like they're starting to step in um, yeah, they'll rotate into these but I, overall, you know, I, I've been bullish for the last few years, my, my annual technical outlook, which, uh, you know, I'd invite people to, to visit my website and, uh, you know, they're available to clients. It, it actually turned bearish this year for the first time in, in quite some time. I do think that this year has an above average chance of being a down year. Um, and so I think that's going to continue through 2022, you know, and, and that we could have our first bear market in a while. And, you know, we don't really see any evidence of that right now, but so it's going to take at least some first shot across the bow to take indices lower and then probably the retest on much lower breadth and volume. But uh, yeah, so maybe uh, six to 10 percent from maybe last week's highs or the highs that we're, you know, about to put in. And then uh, the recovery will have a lot of market messages in it, won't it? If that happens, it, it will. It will. I, I think that if we have any sort of pullback in February, that could be the first sign of really testing these trends. Uh, it, it just doesn't have a lot of appeal for me to chase markets at these levels, given that you're seeing things like the put to call. And this is yeah. an interesting uh, ratio that you've really moved down to the lowest levels you've seen in, in over five years uh, on a monthly chart. 13 yeah. week moving average of that has really. Uh, gone substantially lower and that now is at the lowest level on the 13 week that we've seen in almost 10 years so a pretty radical 
departure from what we'd seen of late. And you definitely started to see some evidence of, of risk on type positioning towards the latter part of the year last year. Yeah. And people got to be a lot more comfortable with the Fed and they felt like the trade deal was on, uh, you know, and it's just everything was had been moved to the back burner, which had been a concern uh, last year. And you yeah, saw that they the solved everything. Position. Yeah, they right. solved everything. But I, I would like to know what your take is on what's been happening in the overnight market and repo market. And uh, you know, I know you're a great technician, but I know you also look yeah. at uh, things under the hood, the uh, fundamentals of the engine. This is, this uh, are is... we throwing a rod? Uh, well, that's a that's a larger question. I, I, yeah. I wish we we don't have enough time to discuss okay. that in detail. I, How I about wish, the cliff notes? Yeah, I would say the one thing that's interesting that's different in the last couple of weeks is that you're seeing high yields start to lag a bit, and that's something. Okay. This is just a ratio of uh, you know the spread between the uh, LQD and the HYG, and for the first time, you're seeing this you know, really break out a little bit, which indicates a widening of, of credit and the high yield has not really followed suit. Uh, the other is that you started to see real evidence of, of defensive positioning also. We haven't seen that in some time. Uh, last week, utilities actually outperformed technology by a wide margin. So yeah, you're yeah, seeing a push that. back into these defensive groups. This is the utility sector. Uh, you've seen it in the REITs as well. Where you see the REIT outperformance. Um, so those are a few and, things. And TLT, are, Mark, TLT is uh, in a big contra uh, symmetrical yeah. triangle that's compressing. And uh, it looks, I mean, the bias for me is that it's going to come out to the upside. Okay, you have a different triangle. But we're right there. This compression is unbelievable. What do you think here? Yeah, my thinking is you probably do break out to the upside just because yeah. I'm more more bullish on on treasuries here. I, I think that you know it's it's tough to make much of this little choppy move as being anything all that uh, you know all that negative in, in thinking a top is in. So I'm I'm expecting that yeah there you, you know if you yeah. take out 140 on this yeah. and that should be a pretty pretty much a straight shot to getting back towards highs. So I I, I share your you know your your optimism on, on the on the treasury market. I think and thinking that the you know the long end. You know, interestingly enough, you did see some indication of uh, of uh, of the twos ten starting to break down. You know, finally after a pretty big steepening since last August, and yeah, uh, now that's really that. challenging. You know, pretty key levels. Um, you know, the one thing that's interesting to me though is when you look at a monthly basis, you've seen a pretty decent breakout in that also that that historically had happened, uh, you know, at, at prior stock market peaks uh, back in 2000 and also in 07 when you started to see, we've, we've had some pretty good DeMarc uh, buy signals on this and a pretty decent, uh, you know, I would view this to at least be a some sort of a breakout on a monthly basis of this, this down nice look. In, uh, yeah, in I've the seen that. curve. However, you could easily give this back over the, the next few months and, uh, you know, and not make new happen. lows. How about yields make new lows, but the two tens don't? Ten yeah, year I mean, makes I a think, new low, huh? I, yeah, I, I view this as being a little bit more intermediate term. Uh, okay. You know, bullish. You want to buy, but near term, you know, you are seeing that evidence of, of a little bit of a flattening. All right, you were very constructive on precious metals in the miners last time too. In fact, I, I think almost everything you talked about manifested. What a run we had in the miners and precious metals and yeah. you know uh your look now well i i think uh it's interesting what's happening in gold um you know a, a lot of people were of the opinion that we could have uh potentially a, a peak in gold in the month of january i think the positioning is still pretty optimistic um a lot of that's going to depend on really what happens with the dollar and of course, you know, with yields, uh, if yields go stay low, then, uh, you know, it might be tough for gold to have too much of a setback, but, uh, you know, the move today is pretty interesting and pretty negative. I think both in what we're seeing in crude oil and also in the, in the precious metals, we've seen that already in the base metals and, uh, what's happening with, you know, arguably a lot of the stocks that have to do with aluminum and steel. I mean, those have been very compressed for some time and the, the GDX has really stood, stood out as being a lot more constructive. But when you look at charts at like the XME, I mean, that's showing a real breakdown. So a lot of that is, 
you know, aluminum and steel stocks, and those have been compressed. Um, coal stocks, those are really not where you want to be. Uh, the GDX, however, has been, you know, arguably a lot better. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. I, I think that if gold really starts to uh, wash out a little bit, I mean, as long as the GDX remains above 2768, then, you know, you'd still be constructive on that and thinking it can work. Uh, under that really changes things uh, pretty dramatically. I, I, I've been pretty constructive still on the metal space, and, and today is, uh, you know, a little bit of a wake-up call, I think, where you have to pay attention. Um, anything under 1536, and it would argue, you know, you could take the shape of, you know, whatever it might be, maybe an ABC type corrective move to the downside. Um, the dollar has been strengthening. I'm lately. glad you're going there because that's so uh, unclear. And, you know, people keep bringing up, well, who cares about the dollar? It's in the same place it was two years ago, which is true. You know, we really haven't gone anywhere. Um, and I thought we may have had a turn to the downside yeah. um, with uh, what happened a few months ago. Uh, is that yeah. in question or what? What do you think? I don't think yet. I think you can still make that case that, that the breakdown that we saw is more important than the little snapback rally. Um, okay. you know, I, I think that, you know, I look at the, the Bloomberg dollar index just because it has a lesser percentage against the Euro. And so that's still more of an, a corrective type phase. You could, you could get up to 1200 without this doing much damage and then turn back to the downside. Um, yeah, it has been sideways. You know, what's interesting is, is you're seeing the dollar make a lot of interesting movement against some of the, uh, you know, the LATAM currencies, though. When you take a look at, uh, oh, yeah. you know, against the Colombian peso, against the Brazilian real, I mean, those are those are very interesting longer term, you know, charts for people that look at things technically when you look at these. And so it's interesting to see how this is going to, you know, manifest itself if, if, the, if the dollar you know, if we see weakness in the real beyond 430, that would be very substantial to this week to this weekly chart on dollar uh, real, in my view. Yeah, so these countries need a weaker dollar. But in general, I, I think that the charts of uh, like the euro and everything else, uh, you know, constructive. It, it, yeah, I, I still, you know, right now it's it's tough to be. Um, you know, anything. I've, I've seen some progress, and of course, that we've seen that shift a bit in, in the last uh, couple of weeks. And so, you know, we're really at sort of a do or die here in the short run. I mean, you can't afford to really take yeah. out multiple weeks of lows without thinking we're going to reach, which would be a little bit of a bigger bounce for the dollar. But if that happens, then we'll lose some of the EM strength. Uh, right. Because you know, a lot of people are gravitating towards that because they think the dollar has peaked. They're going to. Uh, foreign markets to take advantage of a weaker dollar you're not in that camp uh i had been i think now you've seen the dollar bounce this is what's interesting to me is you look at things like mexico which has recently made a you know a pretty decent breakout last week of this trend that's been intact since 2017 and of course wow. you've seen it also in the eem uh making a very substantial move but these moves largely have already you know, transpired. So I think we're within a couple of weeks of this starting to slow now. I mean, it was right to be bullish on emerging markets back in, you know, last October when these moves started. Now, within a couple of weeks, you know, you might see a slowdown in that. And maybe that does coincide with the dollar, uh, you know, bouncing a bit. The dollar is at a pretty pivotal point. So it's tough to have a lot of conviction. Yeah, um, like that's what, before. yeah, I don't have trouble saying I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, we've had a big move in these and, and now, you know, the DXY obviously, uh, you know, showing some some little bit of a reversal today, Yeah, obviously a key level. So, you know, for now, you can remain bearish. I think that anything above last week's highs and that would change pretty dramatically, particularly if you get above late December and that would make you think we're going to push up. So, okay, you know, that would the commodity indexes, uh, you know, indices largely have been pretty still pretty positive and pretty bullish. I mean, this, this move is just, you know, largely consolidation. I think that you can get a little bit of near-term weakness over the next couple of days. Um, yeah, a lot of people liking agricultural commodities here, Mark. Big bases and beans and wheat and yeah, 
sugar and you know like you know reminds me of the 70s if i could remember that far back but uh, you, you know <laughs> well, what I i'd like a big move but i think uh, yeah you know some of these have uh you know we'll see we'll see what happens with you know some of these have taken a turn back to the downside uh lately we'll see um, that was that was soybeans i mean yeah corn is you know a lot of these are basing but yeah uh, long long-term basis uh you know i'd like to wrap it with uh, a key statement you made is on your yearly outlook this is one of the first years in a long time where you thought there could be a negative outcome and we've gone over all the near-term charts so can you give me the highlights of what makes you think that way it really boils down to um uh there are really four or five important things. And, and one is that momentum, in my view, uh, still is, is really flattening out on a longer term basis. And so that is, is very important. Um, the second is that, you know, sentiment is starting to get a lot more frothy uh, into the, the beginning of this year, at least. Um, you know, sentiment is a concern. Uh, the cycles that I look at, particularly the 10 to 20 year cycle is going to come due and, and historically, you know, there's just a lot of uh, energy toward, particularly as we go through April, May, and then towards the latter part of this year, they're going to be very important, I think, heading into uh, the 2021. And so, you know, that's okay. interesting to me. And, uh, you know, we, we need to see some evidence of, uh, of the markets really breaking, though, and we haven't seen that. So right. it's always tough to look at. I'm not a, I'm not a long-term I forecaster. I, I tend to concentrate more on the here and now and really what's happening than making these big projections. And so, you know, as subscribers know that I, I look out four to six weeks. I don't look out a year or two. But, you know, yeah. I do think that, uh, you know, the longer-term cycles do suggest that the market should be, should be starting to top out this year. We've seen that with momentum. We just haven't seen it in price. And so... You know, let's let's uh, for now, it's, it's still right to be constructive. But I would argue that implied volatility is, is starting to firm and has been in recent months. And that argues at the very least to buy to buy vol here going out the next couple months. And that, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. that's the right thing to do now is, is to look to buy long dated, you know, buy implied volatility, uh, use that to, to met to uh, really edge your long positions and when we start to break down then that'll give a little bit better evidence of uh being a time to short yeah great look at the vix hasn't made new lows in such a long time mark with market making successive new highs that's a great look into something not confirming this euphoria yeah the combination now of the put to call turning down as dramatically as it has while the vix is holding up and uh you know for the first time all year since december actually you have uh you know the s p and many of the major indices are just now in the last couple days uh showing demark sells within two days time this will be complete on a setup after this whole run-up since december so this is an important time. I'm certainly not going to press longs here. I'd be more apt to take things off, uh, particularly in these tech stocks that have done well. You're seeing the defensive positioning. You're seeing yields start to turn down. Uh, yeah. These things should be important. For those, many people look at long-term trends and they say it's not a worry. And, you know, I can't disagree with that if you manage money on that basis. But for those that look at tactical short-term type, uh, positioning, uh, there are a few warning signs now, and so I think it's right to, to heed that. I, I like your philosophy, uh, Mark. Uh, do the right thing today, and tomorrow takes care of itself. Yes, sir. You know, so why don't we go to your website uh, so uh, people know how they could get your uh, year ahead report and uh, uh, subscribe? You're, you're, you're uh, putting out some work for retail. I know you handle a lot of institutions, but you're, you're also uh, get, uh, writing some content for the retail trader. I don't, I don't try to, um, you know, I, I really make it available to anybody who likes it. I, I do okay. personalize work to institutions, but my work, I put out work every, uh, every weekday that's available to, uh, the individuals or institutions, it really covers uh, two or three major charts. Some of the sector rotation, I give some longs and shorts. Uh, I have a okay. promo video in here that I'd invite people to take a look at that, uh, 
you know, really discusses how I uh, go about my thought process and, and uh, really discusses the business in detail. So yeah, newtonadvisor.com is a website. Uh, I'm happy to extend a free trial for a couple of weeks, or you can send me an email to info at newtonadvisor.com. Nice offer, Mark. So, you know, I, I hope this is a great year for you, my trading warrior brother, and that you're in the green and uh, all the turns uh, you're on top of and really appreciate you and, Thanks, what you bring, and what you bring to the table every time I talk to you. No, it's great to join you guys, and I'm happy to uh, discuss anything further offline. You feel free to shoot me an email, and we can continue the discussion. So have a great, uh, you know, rest of the week and a good rest of the year for all those that are listening. Thank you, Mark. We'll get back together soon, everyone. That's Mark Newton, and you could get his, uh, he's offering a free trial at www.newtonadvisor.com, and you could follow him on Twitter at Mark Newton, I believe it's, uh, what is it? Mark, Mark Newton CFP. CMT. Yeah, that's and right. I have a private Twitter for clients that discusses long and shorts every day at Newton Advisors, wow. but that's only for clients. But I, I run that every day as well as some work on stock twits for those that just want longs and shorts. So I come up with, you know, three to five, you know, I, I run sort of a mini portfolio on stock twits and I'm just putting out long and shorts every day on my website. So I'm happy to uh, discuss that with those that are interested. Okay. Don't forget to sleep. Mark is one of the hardest working technicians <laughs> I know. All right. So everyone, uh, that's a wrap for Turnaround Tuesday. Thank you, Mark Newton. And remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. We'll see everyone tomorrow. Adios. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Mark.